Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, as long as you're above the age where YouTube has that weird COPA guideline where they make you designate that this video is not for children, today we are going to talk about a story that is likely not getting the attention it deserves, even though it's a caught-on video assassination attempt against a gubernatorial candidate and a current member of Congress. But before we get into that, we have some housekeeping to deal with because in my previous video, which was on Robert Adams, it is linked in the description this is the thumbnail you guys have seen it likely i talked about at one point of that video about how adams after he was shot still had the gun in his hand this was wrong this was inaccurate this was a mistake on my part and it was based on a written report and commenters on that video pointed out that after the bullets were flying towards roberts he actually flung the gun on the roof and you can see it in the body cam video now you can dispute on whether or not this is an object or a gun whatever whatever but point being this is where they recovered the gun. Whether or not you could spot it on the video better than I can, some people in the comments definitely could, and I was wrong, so I have to correct the record on that. But what we're going to talk about today is the assassination attempt against Congressman Lee Zeldin, who is the gubernatorial candidate running as a Republican in New York. But before we get into that, we got a sponsor, an amazing sponsor. So I'm going to throw it over to them and talk about it on the other side. We often see a lot of people on the conservative side of the aisle complain about how media, franchises, everything, including comedy, is becoming subordinate to woke politics. And this is ruining the art form. And we've seen some conservatives like the Daily Wire step up and say that they're going to create art of their own but like many people i look at that with a little bit of trepidation is it actually going to be good or is it going to be the conservative equivalent of woke in entertainment well this is one of the reasons why i'm so glad to talk about today's sponsor which is flip city magazine this magazine is essentially like mad magazine before it went woke it's funny, it holds no bars, it puts comedy first, and it attacks all the same things that I mock on this channel. I mean, I opened this magazine after it was sent to me, and this is what I was greeted with. A long comic book called Star Trek Re... Okay, I can't say that on air, but fill in the blank of what you think might actually be there, maybe in the comments, but don't actually do that because YouTube would likely censor it. But the laughs don't stop there. There's a whole section, again, in this same magazine about conservative ink, and you can look at the creative art, and you can see, while they are with the message, they're trying to put humor first, and that's what I appreciate. So do yourself a favor. If you're actually looking to laugh at something that is genuinely devoted to comedy and satire that doesn't care about about the modern standards that we're into, a throwback, then go over to flipcitymag.com or click the link in the pinned comment or the top of the description box and enjoy yourself. So Lee Zeldin is a congressional representative in the state of New York who has currently decided to run for governor and he's actually sought out and won the Republican nomination. Now, I look at the polling of Zeldin versus the accidental governor, Kathy Hochul, and it doesn't look too promising for him. However, I do want to point out that he might have a chance because in individual states it's not unusual for a blue state to elect a red governor or a red state to elect a blue governor and he is closer in terms of the polling than the last margin of victory that the last democratic governor ended up beating the republican challenger by however that's not what we're talking about today his electoral prospects are are irrelevant because during a speech on bail reform of all things and by the way this is very notable a man decided to approach the stage carrying a weapon and there's actually video of this man approaching the stage and grabbing on to the congressman that is running for governor and i'm going to play some of that video for you however when it gets too violent i'm obviously going to have to cut it but i do want to give lee zeldin credit but we'll do that on the other side of this clip and for new york yep. doing? and there's only there's only one option. So you can hear from the video that immediately when this person gets up on the stage, when he starts climbing up this thing, people are greeting this with suspicion. They're saying, what is this guy doing? Because this isn't somebody who's affiliated with the campaign. He has no right to be there. And maybe these people just presume that this was an average run-of-the-mill protester protesting a candidate that is unlikely to win. But in reality, this person had much more sinister intent. Now, at the time of me recording this video, we don't have an inkling on the motivation behind 
behind this person's actions. And honestly, since this governor candidate was likely not going to win, it would be weird to say that he's trying to take out a guy that, again, is a no-name in Congress that happened to win the Republican nomination in the state of New York that is trailing Kathy Hochul by right now around 18 points, according to the RCP average. That being said, he got the knife out and he grabbed onto Zeldin, as you can see in the video. There's only one option. There's only one option. Now, I don't know anything about Lee Zeldin, except he was giving a speech against bail reform, which is good. Bail reform is a huge problem in the state of New York. The fact that all of these criminals can be charged with all of these serious crimes and no matter what, they can't be held on bail has been a disaster. It has led to a giant spike in crime in not just New York City, but New York State as a whole. And this dude grabs onto him and the weapon is in the hand. You can kind of see it in the video. And Lee Zeldin, this is probably your most badass moment ever. This guy came up with intent to stab you and you grab onto his arm and then security swarms and they get you out of that situation. Now, again, as somebody who doesn't know a lot about Lee Zeldin, as somebody who has called him during the outtakes of this video, Lee Zelda, multiple different times, it was actually quite impressive that after they wrestle this guy away, after they put him in the squad car, after he's gone and the threat is neutralized, that Lee actually came out on stage and resumed his speech on bail reform, which is a crucial speech to say the least, because one of the things that ultimately ended up happening is that this person who tried to assassinate a member of Congress, an active member of Congress, and a Republican gubernatorial candidate during a campaign speech in broad daylight was only charged with attempted assault, not attempted murder, not completed assault, despite the fact that the video shows him completing an assault. An assault is physical contact in New York. In other places, a battery is what he would have committed, but in the state of New York, assault is what battery is under law in other places. Now, because he was charged with a felony in name only, he was actually released the very next day without bail, released on his own recognizance. So this guy who attempted to assassinate a Republican member of Congress and gubernatorial candidate is out on the streets today. He's just fine because that's how ridiculous the New York State bail law is. Hey guys, editing Sean here. I know you guys just watched me look directly into the camera and tell you that this guy was released very next day, but the thing is, I don't want to be accused of spreading misinformation because it turns out he wasn't released the very next day. That was wrong of me to say. He was released the same day, hours later, and you know who is not surprised by this? Lee Zeldin, quote from his Twitter, his words as he tried to stab me a few hours ago were, quote, you're done. But several attendees, including Esposito for New York, badass, by the way, for the attendees to get in, quickly jumped into action and tackled the guy. Law enforcement was on the scene within minutes. The attacker will likely be instantly released under New York's laws. Guess what? 100% right. Didn't even take a full day. Not even a night in jail. You try to stab a congressperson on video that's running for governor? No big deal. Now, the accidental governor, Kathy Hochul, ended up releasing a statement following these events about how this is not who we are. We don't tolerate political violence unless that political violence happens to be perpetrated by minorities based on something that happened in the city of Minneapolis. And this is unacceptable and definitely doesn't represent who we are as New Yorkers. Which is interesting because we've now discovered that Kathy Kathy Hochul's campaign was actually sending out emails detailing all the campaign stops of Lee Zeldin, times, dates, whatever, and included in this email was all this talk about what a dangerous extremist the guy is. Now, Hochul's defense for these actions prior to the attack is don't worry about it. You know, we only sent that email out and it was a parody to the media organizations that are supposed to be unbiasedly covering this election. I mean, they're totally in the tank with us. That's why we're supposedly sending media outlets inside jokes. Don't worry about it. Nobody else saw it. We weren't doing anything weird by emailing out the location of the campaign stops of our political opponent by calling him an extremist at the same time. Whatever, whatever. Don't worry about it. Now, you could take that for whatever it's worth, but the thing is, this is one of the most representative of New York State events that we could have possibly had. Democrats passed a law under Andrew Cuomo that Kathy Hochul has fought back reform efforts to get rid of cash bail. They decided that no matter how many times you commit a certain amount of crimes, no matter 
matter your previous criminal history, no matter your likelihood to reoffend, that if you commit crimes that basically aren't attempted murder or murder, then you are going to be let out of jail without bail no matter what. They set the stage for this. So now you have a guy who didn't care about getting caught. He did this in broad daylight in front of a bunch of witnesses, live television crews, all of that. He targeted a representative, a member of Congress, and somebody running for governor, running against that bail reform law. He brought a weapon, got up close, grabbed him, and what did New York State do in response? They undercharged him, didn't charge him with attempted murder, and they released him the very next day. If I was Lee Zeldin, if I was his campaign team, I would shift my... My entire campaign strategy to crime and getting rid of this bail reform law. If you want to talk about a strategy that will help Republicans win minority voters, specifically Latino voters in the future, this is the strategy. In the city of New York, Latinos and Asians broke for the Republican candidate more than any other time in the history of New York. This was despite the fact that Mayor Bloomberg is one of the most notable mayors in New York's history, and he ran as a Republican back then multiple different times. Think about that. The billionaire who is one of the top 10, top 15 richest men in the United States of America can advertise unlimited throughout the city during the course of the campaign and media time is very expensive in New York. Couldn't convince as many Latinos and Asians to vote for him at any point during the course of him running for mayor in the city of New York, even when he was an incumbent as this former Hells Angels guy who wears a red windbreaker and a beret. And all of the polling indicates that the thing that is swinging Asian and Latino voters into the Republican camp onto this side is crime. Crime is their issue. It used to be in the polling that it was COVID, then crime. But as we know, COVID is a temporary problem that eventually is going to go out of the minds of the American people and crime will remain. It's going up. It's insane. This is emblematic of what is going on in the state of New York. And if Lee Zeldin is smart, if he has good advisors, if he has bad advisors, he should fire them for not doing this. He should run tough on crime. He should run on bail reform. We got story after story after story of people getting out that would have normally been held behind bars based on their criminal history, based on the nature of their offense, and it cost people their lives. And he was almost one of these people. And this guy, by the way, can be out again, and he could reoffend again. It's insane in every possible way and we cannot allow it to happen and Kathy Hochul isn't going to do a damn thing for anybody by the way I know this is overplayed whatever whatever but it needs to be said if this were a Democrat if this were Hochul you best believe that this person would have been charged with attempted murder you best believe that the FBI would have been getting involved because they would have called this a terroristic plot and you best believe that maybe like the Gretchen Whitmer case the FBI would be the key people behind it but since it's a Republican nobody cares they don't even want to give attention to it just like the assassination attempt on Brett Kavanaugh it's in the news one day and it will be out of news the very next even though this is a story with national appeal representative from Congress it has state appeal local appeal this guy's running for governor whatever whatever let's get it out of the news as quick as possible we got to talk about Alex Stein saying something rude in a joking manner to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for days and days and days now look I'm gonna wrap this story here because I don't want to extend this the longer than it needs to be extended but but needless to say, there are serious problems going on in the city and the state of New York. Savannah Hernandez, friend of the channel, recently documented some of the problems in the city of New York. So if you want to learn more about that, I will link one of her videos in the description box of this video. And I definitely recommend you check it out. But until then, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, show me by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about Lee Zeldin almost being assassinated and nobody seeming to care. Till next time.